Hello and welcome as it is the 19th day of March 2020 and this is a chart video for that just of palladium all bets trades of the like within each his own risk and their own reward. On first the monthly term time frame we have seen palladium go up to near that of $3,000 an ounce it has pulled back still above the previous all-time highs at right now at $1,457. Back to this little area for where it congested and it uh, stayed in this, uh, or where it came from in the time period of February through that of August of last year and it has already given back the entire set of green candles from its exitation late last year. And a phenomenal rally it has been and a phenomenal pullback, of course, it has been. And there's been a lot of phenomenal pullbacks in the past. Price action in here coming from up, well, up to 1,000, then pulling back down to like 145. Even this one, not as big of a high, but still 580 and down to 160. That's better than a 3x move because 160 times 3 is three, uh, 480 or uh, uh, 160, 3, 20, 480. Yeah, 480. So 480, 3x from that is like up to like uh, here. So better than a 3x move. So seeing a market now lose half of its value from 3,000 is, you know, whatever. And this whole 3x is what it's going to come down to because, long story short, for me, I'm looking to buy it around 1,000 and pierce below. That's the number I'm looking for to where it came from. And I think it's going to get there. Whether it does or not, We'll see. Now I'm going to show you why that's my area. So the ballpark range is, this is the lower end near 800. And the upper end is this little area in here, which would be, there. that's 1,070. But I mean, realistically, it's probably going to be even closer to 1,000. So I'm thinking it should come down and towards this area in here. Before we do the mathematics to see if Fibonacci works out, the answer will be yes, it does. Then we're going to take a look at the short term. And this is where Fibonacci will end up getting hard because the answer to what high and low you choose, well, the high is easy. The low you choose, well, I'm going to talk about that in a bit. It's not easy. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's just take a look at some of this on the shorter term, though. So daily chart, going through this decline like it is, a lot of this is based on the current news and the current news of course has been very bearish for a lot of the markets palladium being not an ex exception to the other ones on the single hour term time frame it has you can see just uh, has is played out from even this high in this consolidation period you had this failed failed little breakout here it was just a small little moves normal market behavior going on and now that that's not that's no longer normal and when this was going on you were already in a pattern of having several resistance hits and exitations on the 18 average as it was and then things just go super wild so now are we going to get any little price differentials to stop this on the hourly well here is a situation where it tried to get above it but obviously complete failure after that it needs to hold where it comes from. It needs to hold the 18 average of lows. Not even close to be able to uh, do such a thing. And I'm just going to try to get rid of that. And gone. So from this point forward, we have resisting on the 18, trying to get above it again. Not holding the 18 lows. Not holding where we came from area. And then finding weak support at this area. There's an example of it right there. Resisting where you're supposed to uh, find support. And then just continuation down. But here we are going above the 18 average on March the 17th. And um, still not. It, has, it hasn't been able to do it. But we have at least been stabilizing within this area. Now let's go to Fibonacci. Because this little area here. Just remember this 14 and change area if it comes to any importance. Because oftentimes when you're trying to calculate lows, if you can come with find any data on uh, that can convince key levels, which we will here, then yay, I suppose. So what low do I so, so choose? Let's, uh, let's let's figure out the high. That's easy. That's the high on here, two thousand eight hundred and fifteen. Okay, done. Low. Which one do I choose? Do I choose this low? Do I choose this one? Do I choose down in there? 
and normally I like to pick big, like when I say big lows, I mean like just the reverse of the high, like low lows, I guess, like down in here. However, there has already been an amazing rally and good price correction with multiple hits at this point here. And I suppose if I'm going to use this date, I, I mean, what happened before here? Maybe I should be using lower levels and I kind of need to research more num better numbers. And I think those low numbers could work out very well. But for that very reason, my first instinct is to go with levels in here during this time frame where we had multiple low hits. And we can see if I use a number like 170, that to me should be a perfect number because that's what was hit in 2003. Again, for the entire 2004, 2000, well, the 2005 time frame. And then it was the lows from the 2008 crises. So 170. So I'm going to use my calculator. I've already got the highs at 28.50 in, at 15. And I have 38.2, 61.8, and 76.4. That's how much it is from low to high. So for ratio or for corrections on the way down, uh, as 38.2, that's a 61.8% down move. And this would be one minus on each of the things. The math on this is high divided by low to the exponent of this number, so 0 0.382, 0 0.618, so on and so forth. Um, then multiply the low of 170. The up target is the exponent of 1.618, and the down, although they're not going to, going to be used, negative 0.618. So 1451, the current price is 76.4, representing that of a 23.6% down correction. And 963 is the 61.8, that, that big one, that one that is, and even 500 for that matter, this thing could be a wild, wild ride if we even hit that. But for now, we take a look at where we stand here at 14.57, well, that 23.6 number, 14.51. When I'm looking to see if that's a key number, do I, do I think that is 170 a relatively good low to use? And when I see 1451 acting as I do on the hourly term time frame in here, then yeah, I have to think that this Fibonacci, let's put 1451 in close enough. I mean, I need not put the line in. I mean, there's already that, that red line is close enough at 1457. So it has been that area where it is congested, stayed sideways. Now we're breaking down from it. That's a decent size. What just one? And that's the thing about play. Just one tick by does that. Someone's that's like a twenty-seven point move. What happened there on the one minute? Yeah, one order. That's all it takes on on this exchange. One order with like no volume. Okay. It is what it is. I I don't trade these markets. I've never, ever, ever had any possession of palladium. But I want to. But this is my key number right here. That's where I'm going to look. I think to want to consider putting a buy order in. Now, how would I put a buy order in? And how would those steps be coming into play. Well, first I need to see the price action. And it just makes sense that, well, do the key, key FIB numbers come to where it came from? Well, this 14 number, that's a key level there. Up here's below 1,000. Well, that, and it usually if it appears as extra, into 850. Yeah, the 500 level, I suppose, was the one below that, 497. So does 500 have any historical levels? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, support here, resistance here. Nothing major, though, but still, I'm looking at that 885 level and as far as buying it, he's buying it physically at like a billion dealer. Myself, I would probably prefer a Canadian maple as that is from Canada, a country that I'm located, but also palladium is a very candid mines a lot of palladium. 
I think Mexico does as well. I think you can check for the hot largest mining that there is. Uh, South Africa, maybe Australia. But there's a few there's a few nations out there. There's only about five. Russia. Russia, I think, is big in palladium too. But uh, you want to get it try this best certified way that certified way that you can. Uh, I don't know how easy it would be to counterfeit palladium. My first thought is, well, you work with silver and then you try to combine whatever metals after that for the weight and all that to try to you know, pass as many not so genius tests. And when I say not so genius, that means I, I don't, th you'll never be able to, I think, fake the metals and be able to have the best people in the world spot it kind of deal that's people that's what we're in a business where that goes on where people try to fake coins and that's why i'd be very careful as a buyer to make sure that you're buying gold silver palladium whatever metal that it is that you're buying that is legit so i'm going to finish this off again the short term things have been taking a massive hit now i was going to buy this coin a long long time ago which was like probably back in here when it was like under around a thousand dollars an ounce it might even might even been down in here at the 900 level and i had it available to buy on my silver gold silver gold bull dot, gold silver gold bull dot ca i went to go to check out and then the price tag was higher than i thought because i'm not used to paying taxes on gold and silver there's none of it on the bullion there and then they wanted to charge me HST, as we call it here, which is a pretty decent percent. And then I, I decided not to. And then the gains, of course, have came into play. Now, I think I'm just going to have to live with that fee and just have to say, man, that's just going to make the rake, as I like to call it, the premiums, as the community calls it, just a little bit higher. Because in Canada, you're paying fees for these things as they uh, get to pay it on the rake. Anyway, it sucks. It totally sucks. I don't like it. And I'm just, just stalling the end of this video. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.